Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Autogefühl. Today with me AJ and... Well, actually, today it's just me. Unfortunately, Michelle or Jonas or Thomas B couldn't be here. But I still wanted to bring you guys some cool footage. Last year, you might remember, I drove a 1971 BMW 2002 TII at the Krem 21 Youngtimer Rally. Well, this year I'm back and I'm driving a 1997 BMW Z3 2.8. So, let's have a quick AJ special episode on this car. Are you ready? Let's go! The BMW Z family, the Roadsters, has an interesting history. The Z1 was launched back in 1989 and had cool features like doors which would drop down into the door sills. Then the second generation, the Z3 that I'm driving right now, was launched back in 1995. The version I have today, the 2.8, was launched in 1997. Since then there has also been a Z8 which was designed by Henrik Fischer and you might know the Fischer Karma, the hybrid car which is also designed by him. Of course, since then we have had three generations of the BMW Z4 already and of course the brand new Z4 Roadster that was just released. The BMW Z3 Roadster has a unique look which is instantly recognizable. The long front bonnet with the power dome on the hood, the BMW kidney grills and the horizontal headlights. This car has proper Roadster proportions. It's 1.75 meters wide, very low, 4 meters long, of course a long bonnet, the cabin set in the middle to achieve 50-50 weight distribution and I also particularly like the shark fins along the side which just give this car that cool factor. In comparison, the rear of the car is a bit more simple, although this mint green color and the dual exhaust tips definitely help. The Z3 2.8 comes with a 2.8 liter inline six cylinder naturally aspirated petrol engine which makes 192 horsepower and 275 newton meters of torque. It is longitudinally mounted, goes through a five speed manual transmission and with a limited slip differential goes to rear wheel drive. The Z3 is certainly not a very practical car. The boot has just about enough space to hold two people's weekend's worth of luggage and that's about it really. The doors are quite small and you have to really bend your head to get inside considering the fact that this car is so very low. But take a look inside, it's so 90s. I like these sports seats, they're a bit firm and not don't have good enough side bolstering. I'll talk about that a little bit later on when I'm driving. But of course the quintessential 90s analog dials for the tachometer and the speedometer and a cassette deck player. This is a five speed manual even though the stock says six speed. <laughs> it's got a nice short throw but not a very gated feel. That's another thing that I don't particularly love about this car. Manual handbrake as well. There is a glove box down here which is pretty good decent amount of space, some door pockets, cubby hole over here, as well as a space on the top. The roof is manually operated, you can just lift it up as so and you have these latches to undo them when they are, uh, when you have the top up to put it down. The seating position is just right. Even though the steering wheel cannot be adjusted for reach or rake, you can adjust your seat and get a very comfortable seating position. You're sitting very low, the car itself is very low, very squat and wide. You have good visibility out forward. Of course, with the roof down, visibility is no issue at all. But even with the roof up, there is just about enough space, I can tell you, to fit inside. Thomas perhaps might not be that comfortable, he might be a bit too snug. But 
you know, there is adequate room to move around for two people. You're not really sitting on top of each other. But yes, this is not the most practical car around. Well, here we are. This rally is pretty cool. It's taken me through Aachen as well as uh, through the Eiffel region, which is very close to the Nürburgring. And now I'm heading off towards uh, Luxembourg. So let's talk about the Z3. Well, even though this is not the first Z car uh, that BMW made, I think it's one of the most iconic. And it's the one that sold in the most numbers as well. Back in 1997, this car got a 2.8 liter engine, the one I'm driving right now. It makes a sweet 192 horsepower and 275 newton meters of torque. Wanna hear it? Let me drop it down. Flip the throttle. <laughs> it sings, it's joyous. The BMW straight six petrol engine is a German institution and this is no different. It has such a linear power delivery. The throttle response is instant and sharp. The steering is also impeccable. It gives such great feedback. But at the same time, it's got such a nice weight to it, thanks to it being a hydraulically assisted steering. The brake feel is also fantastic. And the pedals are also placed so well that when you're going around a corner, you can really heel toe very easily. And even an amateur like me, who doesn't know how to heel toe, I find it quite easy to do. The acceleration is immediate. Of course, 192 horsepower isn't a lot, but let's keep in mind that this car weighs only about 1,350 kilograms. So it is pretty lightweight. The whole chassis feels really tight, really taut, very sharp. And even though it's a really low car, you're sitting down low, all that's great. You know, you would be worried that it's a bit harsh to ride in bumpy city streets, but the truth is, you know, I've been driving through a lot of really small village streets here on this rally and I must say I've never found it to be uh, uncomfortable, which is really incredible considering the fact that there is very little ground clearance. The damping is also just, just right. Very few things that I can say I don't like about this car. The gearbox, well, even though it says six speed on the, on the gear lever, it's only a five speed, but that's not a problem. But being a BMW, you know, similar to the one I drove last year at this event, the 1971 2002, it doesn't have a gated feel. It's a short throw, it's a great throw, feels really positive, very mechanical, very tactile, but it doesn't have a gated feel, which, you know, is not a deal breaker or is not ne necessarily a negative comment. It's just, you know, it's different. Perhaps I would have liked it to be a little bit more gated. Apart from that, you know, the seats, yeah, the seats are not also that comfortable. I've been fidgeting around a little bit uh, I've been over this weekend that I'm driving and the dashboard on the top is very shiny. The black paint is really glossy. So when the sun hits, not like right now, but when the sun does hit directly on it, it kind of hits you in the face. But these are minor niggles in an otherwise visceral, raw, engaging experience. So maybe I should hunt for a Z3 2.8 in the uh, in the used car market. Let's see. The BMW Z3 cost about 35,000 US dollars when it was launched, which is a tad bit expensive compared to its rivals like the Mazda Miata MX-5 or the Honda S2000. But I think it's a great package. So should you be on the lookout in the used car market for one of these? My answer is definitely.